Welcome. Uh, thanks for being here, for having me. Um, I have to uh, accept. I wasn't sitting in a train and I thought I have to accept that my English is not going to be perfect or that I'm going not, not going to be as good as I am, I am in Dutch. Uh, and I will just accept that. I hope you will accept that with me too. Uh, um, I'm a perfectionist. I think a lot of makers or people are perfectionists. And uh, so that's my goal today to accept that. Um, I came from uh, Amsterdam this morning and um, uh, uh, traveled here with my illustrator, creative illustrator friend, Chantal. And uh, uh, yeah, I was, uh, was already speaking in English on the train to get a little bit in the groove. Uh, so uh, uh, we'll just make it work today. Yeah, so um, it's funny because I see this, the Marcus coach is really uh, a lot. So I'm just gonna go here um, because I'm just Margriet and I am the Marcus coach and I am bag maker and uh, owner of uh, Monsac, a bag brand from Amsterdam. Um, yeah, but I'm just here to inspire you and uh, get you into this uh, story of mine and hope to inspire you to maybe think a bit different about selling your creativity or selling the stuff that comes out of your hands. And um, so what's the plan? I'm going to tell a bit more about myself. I always like these things to just to know where we're at and where we're going. <laughs> uh, my journey as a maker, I've been, be I've been uh, working as a bag designer since 2012. So I've been uh, doing it for quite a while. Uh, this week I uh, calculated how much bags I made. Uh, that's a really interesting number that shocked, shocked me, uh, but I'm going to uh, use it as a cliffhanger. Uh, and uh, sharing my lessons because uh, yeah, there were a lot of lessons on my path and I hope uh, yeah, maybe you will get something out of that too. Um, yeah, I have a, questions, a question for the people. So there are some freelancers here. Are there people who sell a product, like a live made product from their hands? A half, a half product, <laughs> or or maybe, can you tell a bit more about that? And then I'll give you this. Yeah, <coughs> I'm a visual artist and a live model is show how to create sculptures. Ah. I sell them actually. Yes. I want uh, what I sell them or what I can expose. And the sculpture is then yours and the ideas. Yeah, and I, I, I make them with substitutes. So that's the kind of the yeah. model, money model I have in my work. Nice. So I can show them later. Yeah, great. Thank you for sharing that. Your neighbor also put her hand up. I haven't sold that, much, that many things. Um, I do a lot of things. One of the things I do is I, um, I make cartoons using uh, old stamps. And uh, I have a friend who actually helped them. So Oh, really interesting. <laughs> yeah. You you don't. Uh, why why did you ask your friend to sell? Well, he offered. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. You didn't say no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, for sharing. We can actually throw this, but I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> but I will do it later. Try it. Um, yeah, and your work or your own work can also be something that's not physical. Is there someone else who, who says, yeah, I, I sell maybe ideas or, or something digital uh, and, and I find it really scary to sell it? Is there someone here in the audience that is that scary to sell? Oh, it's me. I'm, I, I'm scared about that or scared. It's really interesting that making something with your hands or have an idea and then think, hmm, I can just let it go through my body into my hands and get it into life is super interesting i think and and then the next part is giving it to someone like a bag giving it to someone and say that's 100 euro that's the most scary thing there is i think because it's just something that came out of you and then you you ask money for it it's a weird thing that's that's something that's on my mind all the time I find that the most interesting thing, but I'll jump into that later. Um, so the thoughts, 
uh, I'm going to share with you uh, uh, as well later because uh, there I have a lot of thoughts about that, um, scary thoughts. Um, but this is my atelier in Amsterdam. Uh, I, I'm always really proud of showing it. The other side, the other angle is is facing a really cool um, park in Amsterdam, Brembrand Park, and uh, this is where I make bags and uh, give workshops and also help other makers or creative uh, entrepreneurs to sell their uh, little babies, their creative babies. So, so it's always nice to uh, see me uh, in, my, uh, in my favorite habitat. Um, so my journey, uh, in 2009, I graduated textile management in Enschede. Uh, my mom is a sewing teacher, she has a sewing school and I grew up in an atelier, so for me it's really normal to just be around sewing machines and fabrics and to, uh, to be encouraged to just do stuff. My dad has two right hands, I always call him a MacGyver because he can make everything and sometimes uses a lot of duct tape, but that's on the side. Uh, um, and they, yeah, they really encouraged me or they, they showed me that it's, that it's easy to just make everything you see. Uh, so for me to, to go into fashion was, yeah, not a, a weird idea with my mom having an atelier in sewing school. Um, at this moment, my sister also has a sewing school. So it's really in the family, sewing and creativity, but also giving your um, uh, teaching, teaching, uh, teaching stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I graduated there and then I started working as a fashion buyer in in. in in the fashion industry and I really found that super cool because I could travel to cities and do to um, factories and it felt really yeah cool um, and I really like fashion so I was really doing my thing and really enjoyed it but then at some point I had something happened it was a, um, a t-shirt design I was working at Chasen it's a we always call it uh, a, a, like a farmer's jeans, uh, farmer's jeans uh, brand. And they had this t-shirt design of a, a, a naked lady with like these Mickey Mouse hands on her boobs. And a factory in Turkey had to make that. And they refused to make it because it was just too much for them because they had to look at these boobs every day for all those t-shirts they have to make. And that changed something in my head about fashion because it's a trend and why do we have to make so much t-shirts of that and it's nice for half a year and then after that it's not nice anymore or people don't want to buy it anymore and that's yeah changed something in my way of thinking about fashion and made me or or um how do i say that I, there there was a green heart in 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 me or my my heart turned green i think at that moment and it started be started beating really hard, and and it and it encouraged me to, to think, yeah, to take to take different steps. So that's why I came at Studio Yux. That's a it's a Dutch sustainable fashion brand that is not that is not here anymore. They uh, they didn't make it, uh, so that's really sad. But there that is the that is the place where my um, yeah, where my green heart uh, got got bigger and bigger. Uh, so sustainability from that moment became really important for me. Um, but at that time, between the two last jobs, I was like off for a few months and then I saw a bag, a leather bag in a store and I thought that is really nice but really expensive. Maybe, maybe I can make it myself. And my mom at that time bought a sewing machine, like this really big heavy thing that I first thought that's really impressive but also a bit too much i think for those five people a year who will make a bag in your sewing class but i was also really curious so uh i uh, uh i bought some leathers on the on the market and then i made my bag and i was in love with it from the first time and i never did something else it was the material is, is just great to work yeah yeah 15 meter okay I have twee, oh sorry, <laughs> so I have two wires uh, and that's why maybe it's a bit yeah. um, So I fell in love with the material, I made this bag and then I thought 
I want to make more bags. And then I put it, the first bag on Instagram and then friends said, maybe you can also make a bag for me. And then I did it and then just the train got off and it never stopped. Um, yeah, so in 2012, I, I'm also like a conceptual thinker. So when I make something, there has also, to be, has also uh, it's got to be a story around it. I can't do it half. So I do it completely. So I had made up a brand name and a website and uh, yeah, yeah, took it really seriously, but I still worked next to it uh, for quite a bit. So that's also a, a tip for people who want to change jobs or change their careers. Try to do just for a few days or one day or start for half a day, but don't start fully. I see a lot of makers uh, that uh, quit their jobs and want to make a lot of money from their creativity just right from the start and that will kill your creativity. That's, uh, that's something I would never recommend. Um, so I worked, worked next to it. Um, I'm not the type of person that um, shows off with numbers a lot, but I think it shows, it does show for this example that it went really well. Um, so I made a lot of bags, had a team, had a web shop, and I sold bags in stores. And that looks nice, but I was not happy at that time because it was like a sweatshop. I had to make a lot of bags to serve all these stores. And um, yeah, it's something got uh, felt like an itch or didn't really felt good uh, to just be a sweatshop and to make bags 24 seven almost. So at that time, uh, I also hired uh, a photographer uh, to um, make pictures, like really fashionable pictures uh, of the bags. And uh, I have one in the slides uh, that I'm really proud of, but it's not really my style, but it was cool to do at that moment. And then there was this important aha moment for me um, in, the, in the planning of this, uh, this uh, uh, photo shoot because he asked me, what is the story that you want to tell with these pictures and what is your why? And then I really wanted to have like a hole in the ground where I could just fall in because I knew what, what he was talking about, but I just didn't know what my why was. And I, till that time, I didn't think it was important. Um, but he asked, yeah, why are you doing this? I was like, yeah, I just like it. Uh, don't ask such complicated questions. <laughs> Uh, uh, and, and, and then he, he said, yeah, there are a lot of backgrounds. So what is, what, what makes you stand out? What, wh why are you unique? Why are you different from all the others? What do you want to tell through your, through your, uh, uh yeah, through the pictures we're going to make. And then I realized I've been walking on the highway. I've been walking on this way where, um, I just followed the other brands that I, uh, looked up to that I thought were really cool. And um, also the entrepreneurs that also sold products in my surroundings. I just copied them and not in the designs I made, but in the way they sold it. And at that, at that time I realized I'm just doing what everyone else does because I think they have the, the answer. They have the, the key uh, that I don't have. So I will just follow them. And I think that's what, what's also happening on social media right now is that we try to follow people that are maybe a step further in their path that you also want to walk and you think that they have the golden key for you. But I found out that trying to copy others won't make you happy or make uh, you use all the stuff and all the talents you have in you. Uh, by doing what other people do. Um, so then I found out I have to walk the my way. <laughs> and this, uh, I really love to be in the nature. So it's, uh, it's a really nice yeah, path of yourself that is unique and that is yours. And you don't have to be special for it or you don't have to work your ass off before it. You just have to be it. And I think with social media, and having all these people and brands around you that you can compare yourself to, make it into a, um, a competition. Uh, who knows best or who does it best or who sells best. That's why I said I'm not a figuring person. 
because yeah, I don't know how it's how your algorithm is going, but I have a lot of coaches who, who, who try to sell me into 10k a month. Yeah, that's just bullshit. Maybe one month, or maybe they did it for one month, but it's just not something that you can keep going uh, for months or years after each other. So that question was really important for me. What is your why? Why are you doing this? Because it made me think, why am I doing this? And why do I want to yeah, sell these sell these bags? Why is it important for me? So I, yeah, digged and digged and digged in my brain uh, to find it. And, and at first there were a lot of uh, 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 negative beliefs. Um, so my biggest enemy in that time was my brain. And I think that's our biggest enemy every day uh, is the, the way you think about yourself and the way you put other people on a stage because they know what they're doing and they have the answer but it's not true we're all in the same situation where we all think we're just doing something and don't know what we're doing and we'll see where it ends uh, so no one no one has that uh, has that golden key i think um so I want to share some of these ideas. They're a bit, little bit mixed with a lot of the thoughts that uh, coaches and makers I help have, or I hear around me. But this is the biggest saboteur I hear. So I can't make money with my hands. So for everyone who maybe has in the back of their mind a dream, but sometimes a more creative life by doing something more with their hands and maybe make a business out of it, but it doesn't have to be. But if you want to, um, you will probably think this, you can't make money with your hands. Um, and that's, that's because a lot of people told you shit about it. So are you sure about this? That's some, something s someone said to me when I started Bonsak and when I uh, quit my part or uh, uh, went from a full time to a part time job. Or uh, go for a safe job because you have to you have when you use your brains that it's more safe that you uh, will yeah get a paid a good paid job and it's it's just smarter um, or it will never work Margit. Uh, that's something uh, and and all these things are not about me that it's just a trigger about what they think about themselves now i know that i didn't know it but uh, back then um yeah so so you will hear stuff like this um I also thought there are so many bag brands. How do I stand out? How how do I, yeah, uh, get my little place in this big big market? Thoughts of others do a better job than me. Do I deserve this when it will work out? Do I deserve that? That's, that's such a weird question. But we're humans, and we have just uh, thoughts like that. Or what will people think if I uh, if I will make uh, make it work? They will have opinions about me. I didn't go to art school, um, so I don't have a degree in making bags. I just started it and it worked out. Uh, but I didn't go to art school. Uh, so am I worthy of the title bag designer? I used to use bag maker because it is it like a downgrade. Bag designer, yeah, I designed the bags, but am I a designer? It's, it's so interesting with using these specific words and do you feel you're worthy of the words? Um, I don't know what I'm doing half, the, half of the time. Can I really stand for it or stand for myself? Uh, nobody taught me to be an entrepreneur. Also really interesting that on art schools uh, or on schools, people don't teach you how to be an entrepreneur because it's a whole different game. And you, if you can make, it doesn't mean you can sell. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a maker, I'm not an entrepreneur. Putting my, myself in the spotlight, that's what I talked about in the beginning, the thoughts you have about yourself. Uh, do, I, do I dare to stand here and tell you what I know? Am I good enough for that? Thoughts like that. Uh, selling myself is freaking hard. You have to put yourself on a stage every time. Do, are people interested in that? Uh, what's it worth and what I'm, am I worth? Like pricing? Uh, how many how, how much euros do you ask for a bag that also got my bags got more expensive over time because i felt more secure about myself so i think it, yeah th those are those are yeah things that really sabotage me 
Yeah, and in the end, I just wanted to find my unique voice and use it and proudly sell my, uh, my bags, my stuff, and dare to show myself, to take myself seriously, and finding people who want to listen to it and they want to pay for the stuff that, that I do. And in the end, it's all about a lifestyle. When you, when you make stuff with your hands, it's a lifestyle you want to live because making is the most important thing you, you, you want to spend your time on. So you just need money to buy you time to make. So it's not about the money. And that's also really interesting. Um, yeah, so the key, there are some, some small things I want to give, with you, uh, give, give you. The lessons I learned and that helped me. Um, the biggest is the key is not on social media. You, the key is not out there. It's in yourself. It is to have to be brave enough to go inside and to find what makes you the, the thing that you think about first when you stand up, when you when you get out of your bed in the morning. Uh, uh, what floats your boat? I also think that's really really interesting. And then follow that feeling. And then people think, yeah, that's, really, that's a really easy way to think about it. But it, in the end, it's just the truth. Uh, yeah, so get to know yourself. Uh, find your, find your a happy place or find where, you, when, where your talents um, yeah, can grow bigger and bigger and, and make you happy every day. Uh, but, the, but using your talents and work with it and find someone who likes that, what you're doing, that always, all, that's also fuel. So people that tell you, oh, it's really cool what you're doing, that's, that's a really important fuel because you don't have a boss who tells you that. Um, and something that really helped me, that was like the, the, the key or the, uh, um, yeah, the values, yeah, core values. That's what I was looking for. Um, so core values really help me. It's super simple. You just go through the list and find the words that really uh, uh, spark joy or, or make you happy. So for me, connection is a really important core value. So I used to sell a lot of bags in stores. And um, I didn't really see who sold or yeah, who, who bought the bag. So they were just out there and yeah, they were out there. And I didn't know who their who their bosses were or who their friends were. You, you know what I mean? When you make a bag, it's like making a friend or making uh, a companion or a maatje in the Netherlands. And for me, yeah, I have such such emotional connection with my bags, with the stuff I make, that I don't want to just put them in a store and sell a lot of them. Uh, so for me, connection is really important. I want to know the person or, or see the person who I make the bag for. So. Since uh, two years, I quit with all the stores I was selling in and with my web shop. And I now only sell uh, bespoke bags. So people come to my atelier or I meet them online. And then uh, we talk about what they find really, uh, what they fancy in a bag, what, what irritates them in the, 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 the bags that, I, that they have, but are just not the perfect bag. Um, so we talk about that and then I help them with designing the perfect bag for them and then yeah they will be happy for the rest of their lives because it will uh, uh, it will live longer than that than them so uh, so connection is really important for me uh, I really like to be around people and to uh, to make them happy with the stuff I make so that's something I found there and when I so when uh, when I when there's a project um, so the other day there was a, uh, a Leolux is a big um, brand of um, couches and, and sofas and big brand in, in Holland and they have a lot of leather leftovers and they wanted me to make bags out of it. And then I just checked in with myself, is that like bum 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 making a lot of bags and of course it's, just, it's sustainable because it's left over and that's really important for me because I only work with leftover leathers. Um, but I checked in with myself and then I thought, no, I'm not going to do that because it's not the connection that I want with the products because that is just making money without the connection. So in, 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 in the core values, or you can use the core values to check in with all the stuff that you're doing and the stuff that you're going to do if, if it fits with you. So for me, this, is, this really helped. Um, 
discover your fascination. That's also really interesting. So what fascinates you with something you can't stop thinking about or speaking about? I have that with the, the just not perfect bags. I can talk forever about bags, but I can also talk forever about entrepreneurship and uh, selling your, your, your babies. And that's something that really fascinates me. Yeah, and the perfect, uh, this is the photo shoot that I was talking about. Um, so the perfect bag is for everyone different. Your perfect bag is not your perfect bag. So it's not, it's not existing. You can't, you can't buy it in a store. Um, so, so that's something that fascinates me. What also fascinates me uh, is the, 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 the mass production of stuff that, that's, that, that, that is in stores uh, that most of the time will not be bought and then will be thrown away. That fascinates me in, in a negative way. Uh, so, so find your fascination because that will make your heart beat and then uh, life will become nice. Uh, and this is also interesting, find your irritation because that's also a really good uh, drive um, uh, um, yeah, to, to find out. For me that was, uh, so, so I only use rejected leathers, so the, those are the, the the parts that are rejected because of scars, uh, so leather, uh, leathers, uh, hides uh, that are rejected because of scars or because of the color is not perfect, it's not the right Pantone color, um, uh, or it's it's just it's yeah it's, it's just not perfect enough for the big brands. So I only use that leather. So that that also fascinated me that or it irritated me as well that all those leathers get thrown away or burnt because they're not perfect enough. Um, so that's why I make the bags from that. And because the irritation is so big and the fascination is so big, I can talk about it for hours. Uh, and you need that. You need something that you want to talk about forever because you have to talk about it for people to know. You have to raise your voice. You have to uh, share your thoughts uh, for people to get to know you. And in the end, for me to buy it, to buy from me. Uh, yeah, and what also fascinates me is the way of making something with your hands and then asking money for it. I, I find that super fascinating. This whole, uh, all these saboteurs in your head that think that you're not good enough uh, or that others are better, uh, that others are better than you or that there are already so many illustrators or so many pottery uh, 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 ceramics. Um, but there's always space. You just have to take it. There's always space in the market for you, which is just have to, yeah take in that spot. And that's something I find really um, interesting. And um, so that's why I also help other creative people to, uh, to, to live from their hands and to dare themselves and to get to know these feelings and thoughts that, that hold you back, that keep you small. So that's something that fascinates me too. Well, do you think, or are you thinking, yeah, I just really want to, maybe I'm in this job and I really want to, uh, go for it, take a leap of faith, follow that spark that's in you. Uh, I um, made this Maker's House, so this is my, uh, my own, yeah, a lean canvas, you can say, but as a maker I was never um, triggered by that, because it just, it's just not for, for, for creative people, it's just really boring and, uh, and, and old. An old story, so that's why I made my own maker's house, and uh, so that's that, that's that's why that, through the maker's house I help other people to sell their sell their bags and uh, stuff. And this and this tool helped me sell sixty thousand five hundred bags. I they just yeah I calculated it this week and I was super surprised by that number. I don't know how I did that, but I think I just just went for it. I just stepped on that train and I followed my frustration, my irritation, and my core values, and uh, and here I am, just step by step, drip by drip, you just have to follow you, uh, follow your heart and, uh, and go for it. Um, so if you want to get more inspiration, I also have a really cool podcast, it's called Gouwe Klauwe, well here in Rotterdam that's perfect, right, Gouwe Klauwe, 
<laughs> it's called yeah gold gold hands it's a it's a translation uh so it's a really cool podcast about creativity um and and, and maker and crafty crafty people uh, come in my atelier and we have a nice talk about it and you can also follow me on instagram of course um yeah so that's it that's my talk i'm really <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.